Hello, kittens. How's it going? It's been a while. I am Zira, also known as Love of the Dark. Um, I am Love of the Dark on Ravelry, on DeviantArt, uh, lots of places. Um, in fact, if you want to go to my Ravelry account, if you scroll down, scroll down through my profile, you will see um, who I am. I, I've got all the places listed and what names I use there, so you can follow me around on the social media. Um, I have been away for a while, so pardon me if I'm a little bit like blah 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 blah. blah. Um, my tongue doesn't want to work today, but I'm here. Um, I, I took a little bit of a break because it was really hot for a long time here. Really hot and really dry and it was hard to just stay comfortable. Um, I don't have air conditioning in my house. We have a little window unit that kind of sort of does a half-assed job of keeping like 10 square feet rather, you know, lukewarmish. But uh, uh, I don't knit very well when it's hot out like that. So I put everything on hold. I did a lot of drawing, which I'm not really going to I'm not really going to show any of that today. Um, you can see that on my DeviantArt when I get around to posting it. Um, but anyhow, so, hi, I'm back. I'm here. I'm Zira. I already said that. I'm drinking tea today. This tea is the Tulsi Holy Basil with turmeric and ginger, and it's so good. And I put just a tiny little scoop of um, powdered Damiana, which is just absolutely delicious. Uh, no sugar in that today. Trying to avoid that sugar makes me anxious. I don't like it. Um, <clears throat> I have a finished object for you, um, but first I have other things. So, you know, we do this pirate event thing where we go around to the different, you know, local-ish pirate events and we camp and we behave like rowdy pirates and it's pretty fun. We have this, uh, this guy that we like. We hang out with him a lot at these events. He's a really cool dude by the name of Silver Fox. And Silver Fox knows that I paint um, those little figurines that I paint. And so at this last event, he came up to me and said, I have this thing that I found and I know you'll, it'll work because it's smooth like you said it needed to be. And he brought out this awesome fox. Look at that. Oh my God. And it's smooth. Like, see, there's no texture on it. It's just a nice, smooth sort of thing. It'll work awesome. And I said, well, give him here. I'm going to paint him up for you. So he's got his black, co black coat on right now, and he'll have his face up pretty soon. Hopefully I'll have him finished by next weekend. I'll be able to post a picture. Oh, maybe I will. It's Maybon. Today's Maybon. Happy Maybon, everybody. Um, it's the autumnal equinox. And uh, things are starting to get darker earlier. It's very exciting. It's a little cooler than it has been. Knitting is a thing that can happen again comfortably, which is awesome. Um, I feel, personally, I feel my creative energies coming back. Like, seriously, coming back. All of a sudden, I just want to make things. I want to bake, and I want to create, and I want to make tinctures, and I want to knit, and I want to draw, and I want to do all of the things. So that's what I'm doing. So right now I have some tinctures going. This one that I brought in here, this is going to be elderberry tincture. I mean, it is elderberry tincture. Elderberries have been used for probably as long as people have known that they existed to stave off colds, to be a, uh, whew, yes, that is definitely elderberry tincture. Um, there, it's, uh, you know, you use it during cold season. Um, to sort of keep that crap from from getting into you. It's got all kinds of good properties. I don't really know. I, I can't speak about it very well yet, but I know that it works because uh, I buy elderberry tincture. And I thought, you know what? If I can buy elderberry tincture, I can just as easily make elderberry tincture. Tinctures are so easy to make. So that's what it is, and that's what's happening. And it'll be ready in like oh, probably another week or so. So just in time for, you know, cold season. We'll start taking it and staying healthy. So another thing that I have to share with you is kind of weird. It seemed like a strange idea. I made amazing dill pickles over the summer that are just, holy crap, they're so good. It's ridiculous. Lacto-fermented pickles. Um, it's the only way to make a pickle, as far as I'm concerned. I don't think I'll ever use vinegar in my pickles again because... Uh, it just tastes like vinegar. However, <laughs> we discovered 
a new way to do pickles, and that is gin and tonic pickles, you guys. This is literally pickles. Gin and tonic pickles is what it is. Um, I might share the recipe. I might not. I don't know. I just you can do a Google search. It's really easy. Um, but it's uh, so they take like three to four days to be ready, and then you can start eating them. So at four days, we tasted them, and they were still very, very cucumbery, and there was almost a bitterness there that was kind of strange, and I wasn't really sure if I was gonna like it. Uh, it was okay, you know, but it was kind of like this is a strange new thing. I don't know. But man, give them a couple of weeks and they are so good. Oh my God. They're so good. I think the only thing that I would do differently next time is I wouldn't put quite as many juniper berries in with the mix. Um, the gin that we used was more of a citrus based gin than a juniper based gin. So it didn't really go overwhelming, but it doesn't take many juniper berries to get overwhelming really quick. Um, I happen to love the taste of juniper, so we're all good. But there was others that tasted them that went, oh, I'm not really so sure about that. <laughs> but they did get better over time. I will tell tell you that. They're delicious. Um, let's see here. I have three books to share that I got that are new. Um, this first one is the complete, uh, the complete Illustrated Encyclopedia of Magical Plants. Um, it is a practical guide to creating healing, protection, and prosperity using plants, herbs, and flowers by Susan Gregg. It's a really good book. The thing that I like most about this book, in addition to it just having really solid, good information on uh, the plants themselves, and medicinal uses, and magical uses, how to harvest, stuff like that, is that the pictures are all really nice, clear, crisp um, photographs. They're it makes it really easy to look at that and go, oh, that's what that is. Okay. Um, it, you know, there's uh, like in the har how to harness your plant's magical properties, there's little stories about kind of the traditions of using this plant for this thing. And it's really in depth and really cool. And um, it's just a really awesome, well done book. I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, yeah. And then the next one I got, um, when we were at, uh, we spent the eclipse out at our witch's house. And um, she has a beautiful magical garden out there, and uh, a lot of people came, and it was really beautiful. And um, while I was out there, um, I, I've been more and more interested in herb, herbs and herbalism um, recently. And so, anyway, she has a beautiful magical library that's just gigantic. It's so filled to the brim with beautiful, amazing books. So I grabbed a few of them and went out into the garden to read um, before and after the eclipse. And um, this was one of the books that she had. It's The Complete Medicinal Herbal by Penelope Odie. And so I came home um, after being at her house and ordered this book for myself. And it's really good. Um, again, it's really similar to the other book. It's maybe a little more science-based than the other book is a little more magical-based. Um, but it's got, you know, everything from how to make a tincture or a poultice or a decoction or an infusion, what all the different things mean. And it's just really, really good. There's a lot of the history of how long people have been using this and just really, really good information. So, um, and the gal who wrote it, um, she studied biochemistry. So she, she's a lot more science-based for sure, which I love. Um, as much as I love magical witchery, in my heart of hearts, I'm a scientist. So there's that. <laughs> you can have both though. You really can. Anyway, the last book that I got most recently was the traditional home remedies from the old farmer's almanac. And it's pretty, um, it's pretty good. Uh, the the illustrations are hand drawn. So it's not one of those books that's uh, super beautiful to look at. However, the stories in it and the, the remedies that they suggest and the instructions are all really clear and and nice. And they warn, I really like that they take a moment to warn people about don't just dilute an essential oil thinking that you're going to use it as a tincture now because it's not how that works. You can still really hurt yourself taking essential oils internally. And they talk about that in there at length, which is awesome very responsible. 
So here's the thing that I have. I don't know. I don't know if I ever showed this to you guys. Um, this book is a leather bound book that I made. My friend Catherine had a beautiful class on um, like book binding 101 and taught us a few different stitches and how to how to put booklets together and then how to sew them into a book. And it turned out so well and I've had it for a long time. I've had it for well over a year and I've just not really been sure like exactly what I want to do with it because it's really special. Like this is not just, you know, something you can go down and buy. This is a really special book. So I finally decided what to use it for and it's my kitchen slash herbal grimoire. And so I'm using it to keep track of um, plants and um, stones and their associations, their planetary associations and their, their um, what they're used for and just all of that stuff. It's in my own handwriting. I attempted to use calligraphy and write everything in like <laughs> script. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> so I just went back to, you know, chicken scratch. Um, cause that's, that's just way easier. And I don't know, maybe someday I'll have the patience to write that a whole book in script. Probably not going to happen, but anyway, so let's see, I think that's almost it. I do have a finished object to show you. I'm trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to talk about. Um, happy Maybon. I think I already said that. It's so exciting. Oh, so what, what do you get? Ooh, this is so exciting. What do you get when you have this <laughs> and this and this? I've been talking about it for a while. I've been working on it for a while and I finally finished it and it's way out of my reach. So pardon me for one moment. Oh, okay. Oh my God. It is the goldfish memory shawl and I got bored while I was knitting it. <laughs> and you're not supposed to get bored while you're knitting the goldfish memory shawl. The whole point of the shawl is that each individual section is small enough that you're not going to get bored while you're doing it. Well, as it turns out, I don't get bored of sections. I could do the same section. Like I would not have gotten any more bored had this entire thing been garter stitch because I get bored of a project, not, not of a, a section. So anyway, I did get bored. However, I just finished it like 20 minutes ago. I have not yet woven in the ends, but I wanted to show you anyway. So here, let's get, if I scooch this a little closer, oh, it's not going to do that. Uh, oh wait, maybe it will. There we go. Okay. So da -da -da -da. it's long and rectangular and it's on the bias. That's what that word is. I was trying to think of that word earlier and it just was escaping me. So it's a bias shawl and I have a little mistake here and I don't know what the heck happened, but I just noticed it and now I'm mad because I don't make mistakes. Oh, that's not a mistake. I'm sorry. That's not a mistake. You guys, that'll block right out. It's just a funky little stretch place anyway. So ha, ha, ha. it's really not my colors at all. Like I let the guy, at the at my favorite um, yarn shop talk me into these colors it wasn't very hard he didn't have to twist my arm or anything but I'll tell you what I wear a lot of black and I think this thing is gonna pop against all the black that I wear and I'm super super excited about it uh, as soon as I hang up here with you guys I'm going to go and weave in my ends and block it I think I'm going to block it. I don't know that it needs blocking. Maybe just a quick rinse and a shake, but ugh, I'm so happy to have finally finished it. It's very, very soft. It's very, very soft because it's all made out of Madeline Tosh. I think it's um, twist light. I think it's really nice, nice, delicious, soft yarn. So anyway, I know this is a short episode. I feel like it should be a whole lot longer because it's been so long, but man, I've been busy with stuff that isn't really podcastable. So there's that. Um, anyway, I hope you're having a lovely equinox and, um, go make some magic. Go look at the moon. <laughs>